Welcome to Par Podcast, episode 75.32. Par Podcast is an audio supplement for Public Administration Review, the premier professional journal in the field of public administration. This year, 2015, Par celebrates 75 years of furthering public administration research, theory, and practice. This episode features comments by Michael D. Siciliano, an assistant professor of public administration at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Professor Siciliano discusses his article titled, Advice Networks in Public Organizations, The Role of Structure, Internal Competition, and Individual Attributes. This article is currently available on Early View and will be printed in Public Administration Review, Issue 75, Volume 3. My research asked a very simple question. What are the processes by which interpersonal networks emerge in public organizations? I was interested in a specific type of informal network, one that is often referred to as simply the advice network or the instrumental network. These advice networks arise in part due to the complexity and dynamics of the tasks employees face in organizations. It's natural for us as individuals to go seek out and rely on our local colleagues for help and information. And as previous research on the consequences of networks suggests, these advice-seeking behaviors and the advice networks that they eventually form into are important determinants of both individual and organizational success. The data for my research on advice network formation was gathered from public school teachers in 15 different elementary schools, all coming from one mid-sized urban district. The teachers provided information about their informal networks in schools, as well as information related to their self-efficacy, perceptions of internal competition in the school, as well as a range of other attributes. Administrative records provided by the district contain demographic information on the teachers as well. So in thinking about how organizational-wide network structures emerge in these schools, it's really useful to think about the atomic elements of these structures, right? the single dyad in this case. In other words, these dyads are the single advice-seeking tie from one teacher to another. Each of these single ties becomes the outcome of interest. In the paper, I established a simple framework for advice tie formation and then tested a range of variables and factors that may influence the presence or absence of ties between two teachers. So in total, across these three groups of factors, again, these factors were the attributes of the advice seeker, the attributes of the advice provider, and these dyadic and network processes. So across these three groups, 18 different variables were used to model advice tie formation in each of the 15 schools. So given the large number of factors that were explored in this model, I'm only going to stress a few of the results here. So first, and perhaps most importantly, I was interested in teachers' perceptions of peer competition, and just sort of how competitive they perceive their internal work environment to be. This was not how competitive they were, or how competitive they perceived a given individual to be, but how, how competitive they felt the internal uh, work environment of their school was. And I was interested in this factor because many of the current managerial strategies used to drive performance and increase accountability rely on motivational incentives that promote this very type of internal competition. While many scholars have theorized that internal competition can hinder collaboration, there is little empirical evidence of its effect. The results of the study suggest that there may indeed be unintended consequences on collaborative behavior when internal competition increases. Specifically, a one standard deviation change in a teacher's perception of internal competition in his or her school decreased that teacher's probability of advice tie seeking by 25%. Perception of competition also significantly reduced the likelihood that a teacher provides advice, suggesting perhaps that when competition is high, information provides individuals with a competitive advantage, and therefore they may be less willing to share it. At the dyadic level, Significant effects were found for reciprocity, multiplexity, and homophily. The results indicated that reciprocal advice ties were nearly six times more likely to form than non-reciprocated ties. With regard to multiplexity, having a friendship tie was also a strong predictor. Teachers who were friends were more than three times more likely to form an advice tie than teachers who did not have a friendship tie. Unsurprisingly, with regard to homophily, the results suggested that teachers were more likely to form ties with teachers who taught the same grade. At the network level, or the sort of subgraph level, transitivity also had a positive effect and indicates that two teachers were more likely to form an advice tie if they have a tie to a common third person. Overall, the results suggest that teachers rely on mutual relations, transitive relations, friendship, 
work function similarity when determining advice-seeking behavior more so than peer status or peer tenure. This finding may mean that there's expertise in the network that is not being fully accessed or utilized. The negative effect of perceived competition, which suggested a negative effect on both the likelihood of being a sender and a receiver of an advice tie, is a potentially worrisome result. If you look at education research, education scholars argue that collaboration and knowledge exchange are critical components in schools because much of what teachers learn about being good teachers is socially derived. It's learned from their local colleagues. Therefore, reduction in collaboration may be particularly harmful in organizational settings like a public school system that are dependent upon shared knowledge. The tentative and suggestive results of the study also have implications for how principals, public managers, and policymakers think about organizational change. These decision makers ultimately shape the culture and norms of an organization through the types of policies they put in place, through their leadership style, uh, their managerial approaches. And so it's essential for these decision makers and organizational leaders to not only recognize that informal networks are important, but to also understand how certain strategies, policies, or tactics can constrain or facilitate the development and functioning of these important informal networks. This concludes PAR Podcast, episode 75.32. To listen to additional episodes and learn more about Public Administration Review, please visit us online at publicadministrationreview.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at PA Review. Thanks for listening.